So what actually is an AI agent? If you've been following the news or reading Twitter or reading LinkedIn, you've probably seen everyone talking about how 2025 is the year of the AI agent and AI agents are gonna totally transform all of our work. You've probably seen a bunch of these heated debates about what is an agent versus what is a workflow. And I'm here to tell you that I don't think any of that really matters. In this video, I'm going to give you a practical definition of an AI agent that is actually going to be useful to you, even if you're not a software engineer or an AI researcher. And then I'm going to show you the four common patterns of AI agents that I use that save me a ton of time in running my company. With that, let's dive in. So first, I'm going to show you two technical definitions of AI agents, because it's important to know what these are. And then I'm going to tell you why I don't think these are practically useful and what a better practical definition is. So first, let me read out the definition of an AI agent from Google. An AI agent is a software system that uses AI to pursue goals and complete tasks on behalf of users. They show reasoning, planning, and memory, and have a level of autonomy to make decisions, learn, and adapt. There's a similar but even more precise definition from Anthropic. Systems where LLMs dynamically direct their own processes and tool usage, maintaining control over how they accomplish tasks. So these technical definitions hint at the fact that the LLM is given a goal and some tools and it's doing reasoning to accomplish some task. But I still don't really know from those technical definitions, how am I actually going to use an AI agent practically day to day? And how is it going to differ from other AI tools that I use? So that's what I'm going to explain to you now. Broadly speaking, there are three modalities of AI tool that we should all be using. And they're all useful for slightly different purposes and are going to manifest in slightly different ways in our day-to-day -day work. The first, and the one that we're probably all most familiar with, is the chatbot. We've all used ChatGPT or Claude or Gemini. And so we've experienced the chat-based interface in which we ask questions or we direct the AI to do tasks on our behalf. And then it, it responds in text and we chat back and forth. It can be a sparring partner, it can be a content writer, but it's always in this live interactive text message like setting. That's modality number one. The second modality is a co-pilot. And a co-pilot is not an AI that lives on its own, but one that lives within the context of another tool and helps us take action on the specific things we're doing in that tool. For example, many of you have probably used Grammarly over the years. That's a co-pilot that whenever you're typing a text box on your browser, it'll suggest su improvements to your spelling or to your grammar. Another example of a co-pilot is Cursor, which is a development environment for software engineers where as they're typing their code, it auto-completes things that they might want to include in their software. So those are chatbot and co-pilot. In both of those modalities, we're having a direct interaction with the AI as we're doing something, either talking to it directly in the context of a chatbot or receiving the co-pilot's assistance as we're using another tool. An agent, on the other hand, has a slightly different mode of interacting with us. An agent is something that does work on its own, on our behalf, behind the scenes. That's the key difference between a chatbot, a co-pilot, and an AI agent. In the first two, a chatbot and a co-pilot, you have to talk directly to the AI. You have to interact with it as it goes, whereas the AI agent will wake up on its own, it'll do work on its own, and then will achieve some real-world task on your behalf without you needing to do anything. And that's why they're so cool, because they can replace a meaningful chunk of our work or a meaningful chunk of our team's work without us needing to be hands-on keyboard in front of it. So now that we've created a practical definition of an AI agent, which is an autonomous system that does work on your behalf, I do want to briefly touch on the topic of an agent versus a workflow. First, I'm going to explain the distinction between the two of those, and then I'm going to explain why I don't think that distinction matters in practice. So first, any task that you accomplish in the real world has some flowchart associated with it. And we've all drawn, drawn flowcharts in various contexts. There's a first step, then there's a second step, then there's maybe a, a conditional path of I might do this and I might do that. And then maybe there's an iterative loop where I do the same thing over and over again until some condition is reached. That's a flowchart. And the difference between a workflow and an agent is who makes that flowchart and when. So in a workflow, the flowchart is predetermined by the human, the person, the person architecting the workflow. 
it's predetermined in advance. So you'll write down the flowchart. First, you're going to receive an email. Then you're going to check if it's a cold sales email. Then you're going to respond automatically. So those steps are laid out in advance in the flowchart by the person, even though there may be AI logic or reasoning involved in the individual steps. An agent, on the other hand, constructs its own flowchart on the fly based on its goal and a set of tools it has. So you'd give the agent a goal you need to automatically respond to spam emails. Your tools are, well, you can classify things as spam or not spam, and you can receive and reply to emails. And then the agent would have to figure out on the fly, based on a new email coming in, what set of steps do I want to, to take to achieve that goal? So that's the difference between an agent and a workflow. And let me tell you why I think it doesn't matter in practice. First is, whether it's technically an agent or technically a workflow, they both play the same role in your day-to-day -day work. They do work on your behalf behind the scenes without you needing to do anything. Whether you've pre-specified the flowchart or whether the agent decides the flowchart on the fly is just sort of a detail. It's the same amount of work that's being accomplished for you in basically the same way. The second reason I think this debate is a little silly is it's more of a spectrum between agent and workflow than a binary decision. In many workflows, you may want to have components where you give the AI more flexibility to determine what it should do next. And in many agents, you may want to pre-specify some small workflows or flowcharts for intermediate components of the goal. So in practice, agents and workflows fill largely the same role in our day-to-day -day work, and it's a spectrum of how agentic something is or how much of a workflow is, something is. So when I talk about an AI system that does work on my behalf, whether it's technically a workflow or technically an agent, I'm going to call it an agent because that's the term that communicates the idea most clearly to everyone. Now, to make things more concrete, I want to give you the four patterns of AI agent that I use over and over again in my work. And my goal here is to give you some ideas of where AI agents are going to be practically relevant to you. The first pattern is handling an internal event. And the way that works is something happens in one of our internal tools. We ask AI to process that event in some way or make some intelligent designation based on that event. And then something else happens in another internal tool. So a canonical example of this would be when an email comes in, and that email happens to have an invoice attached to it as a PDF, we're going to ask the AI to analyze that PDF and extract the vendor name, the amount, and the due date from the email. And then we're going to write those summary fields into a spreadsheet. That's pattern one, and it can be used in a whole bunch of different use cases. Pattern two is very similar, but instead of an event occurring in one of our internal systems, we're listening to things happening in the outside world. So when something happens in, an outside, in the outside world, analyze it using AI, and then take appropriate action. For example, when one of our competitors posts a new YouTube video on their channel, automatically analyze it with AI to trigger, try to figure out what are the themes, what are their priorities, who is their target audience based on that video, and then send us a summary internally so that we can react and create appropriate content as a result. Pattern number three, preparation for an event. This one, the way this one goes is when an event is upcoming, look up some reference information, use AI to analyze that reference information and make any necessary decisions, and then act on those decisions. For example, when I have a meeting coming up in 30 minutes with someone I've never met before, use AI to automatically look up their LinkedIn profile, look up any emails that we've exchanged in the past, look up any previous meetings my company has had with them, and then compose that all into a nice pre-meeting notification dossier and send it to me over Slack right before the meeting. That's an example of preparation. And finally, pattern number four is recurring analysis. The way this one works is every day, week, month, or whatever recurring cadence you want, you're going to ask your AI to go out and find some information, analyze it, and then give you an appropriate analysis or summary. For example, every week, look at the meeting recordings of all of the calls we've had with customers, analyze them to pull out key insights, like what they like about our product, what they don't like about our product, which competitors they like, etc., and then send us a detailed insights report at the end of the week. That's pattern four, recurring analysis. So now you know what an AI agent is. You know the technical definition, but more importantly, you know the practical definition. An AI agent does work on your behalf without you needing to be directly involved. And you know the four major patterns of AI agent that are going to be useful in your business. Number one, 
reacting to an internal event. Number two, reacting to an event in the outside world. Number three, preparing for an upcoming event. Or number four, running a recurring analysis. Armed with that knowledge, you are now ready to build your very first AI agent. So click the button on screen right now. It's going to show you another video. And in that video, I'll walk you through step-by-step -step how to build your first agent. You're going to be surprised how easy it is and how useful it is. Hope you find this really useful and I'll see you in the next one.